Lameness is one of the big beasts of dairy cow health, and if you're a dairy farmer or a vet, it's likely to take up a significant amount of your time. Of course, lameness encompasses a broad range of conditions, but several of them fall under this umbrella of what we call claw horn lesions. So that would include white line disease, solar hemorrhage, solar ulcers, and a few more. And on that note, we're gonna dive into this recently published paper coming out of the University of Nottingham. And they were investigating the use of an anti-inflammatory in lame cows, not only as a treatment, but also its potential for prevention of future cases of lameness. And that's where it gets interesting. Now this is a randomized control trial or RCT. And those of you with a little bit of scientific training might remember this hierarchy of evidence, this evidence pyramid. This really ranks the strength of evidence. So the weakest at the bottom, and the highest at the top. Randomized control trials, if they're well designed, are generally considered to be somewhere near the top of that evidence pyramid. Even better, this paper is brilliantly open access. So if this is your thing, I highly recommend you go and take a look at the full paper. The link to that will be in the video description. I'm going to do my best to give you a summary here, but there is a limit to how much detail I can go into in a five to 10 minute video. So if you want the finer detail, go and take a look at the paper. So dairy heifers from one English herd were recruited into this study over a two and a half year period. On recruitment to the study, they were then randomly allocated to one of four treatment groups. Group one was basically conventional best practice. So if these animals went lame, they would be picked out and they would be given a therapeutic trim and a block applied to the sound claw if it was deemed necessary. Group two was the same as group one, except at the same time as any lameness treatment, they would also get a three day course of a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug. So in this case, it's ketoprofen. Brand names you know include ketofen, ki, Dinolgen, and so on. Same family of drugs as Meloxicam, so brand names Metacam, Loxicom, and human drugs like aspirin or ibuprofen. Group three was the same as group two, except there was also a three-day course of ketoprofen at any calving event, regardless of whether the animal was lame at the time or not. So a three-day course, which would start 24 to 36 hours after that animal had calved. Group four was a bit different. So when these were identified as lame, they wouldn't get a therapeutic trim at all. All they would get is a three-day course of ketoprofen, unless they were scored as severely lame, in which case they would get that therapeutic trim. And if I said that too quickly, pause the video here. This summary table describes what I've just said in probably many fewer words. And these recruited animals were scored for lameness every two weeks until October 2020, which meant a 34 month study period. The scoring was done according to an AHDB scale. Again, pause the video here if you're unfamiliar with that. Now, 132 heifers were recruited into each group, but with a few animals exiting, as we'd expect for a number of different reasons, there ended up being 438 animals in the final data set. In total, there ended up being 13,000 886 individual lameness scores from those 438 animals over that 34 month study period. That is a lot of data. The academics then went about analyzing that data to see how likely animals from each treatment group were to go lame over the study period. And they looked at a number of different metrics, the percentage of individual lameness scores scored as lame, the percentage of individual lameness scores scored as severely lame, so 3A or 3B, the number of lameness treatments administered, the number of animals that didn't require a lameness treatment, the average number of lameness treatments per animal, and a few more. As I said before, the full discussion really is worth reading. But amongst the author's take home messages are that by adding in a non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug alongside conventional best practice, essentially group three, this would lead to an absolute herd reduction in lameness of 10%. And that's compared to just conventional best practice, essentially group one. And I should say that's an absolute reduction. So say you're starting with a herd doing the conventional best practice, group one treatments, and they have a herd lameness of 20%. If we then made these changes, the authors would expect the herd lameness to go down by about 10%, i.e down to 10%. So that's not a 10% relative reduction. In that case, it would be just a 2% reduction down to 18% total lameness. These are big numbers and they potentially represent a massive win for animal welfare and production. We'd also expect severe lameness to drop significantly as would the need to cull cows for lameness. As for the mechanism, how does this actually work? You've heard me say this many times before, we just don't know. Although that doesn't stop the authors discussing a number of different ideas in a discussion. These relate mainly to how the anti-inflammatory 
might protect some of the physical structures of the foot, like the digital fat pad and the distal bones of the limb. We know that in these high stress episodes, we see some reversible and some irreversible physical changes to the hoof. So an example of a reversible change would be the thinning of the digital fat pad. This would normally cushion the foot. And as for irreversible changes, you can get small bony outgrowths of the small bones of the limb. We call these exostoses. They're essentially little bony spurs. And you can quickly start to imagine how it's gonna affect the animal's locomotion and its predisposition to lameness in the future. So if you're a dairy farmer, should you run out now and bolt by some ketoprofen. Just hold your horses. As the authors point out, this is a single farm of a particular type. So it's gonna be relatively high yielding Holsteins. They're on a permanently housed system on grooved concrete. They have rubber mats. They are foot bath at every milking in a 2% formalin. And regardless of treatment type in this study, every cow got a routine foot trim at the time of dry off. These are just some of the things we know affect the rate of lameness. And although they're gonna be constant within this herd, they might not necessarily be constant to other herds. Well, they're not going to be constant to other herds. And so the findings might not be generalizable to other herds in other systems. As ever, each situation is different. In their own words, the authors say, our results suggest that this approach should be carefully considered by the attending clinician and if deemed appropriate, recommended for use as a clinical intervention on farm. That is where the vet-client relationship comes in and why it is so important. That's it. I can't imagine any of the authors will watch this video, but if you have, I hope I haven't butchered it for you. As for the rest of you, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a bit more academic than some of our usual technicals, so let me know what you thought in the comments. I'm trying to mix it up between these and some of the more practical ones. And if you liked it, give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead, click the subscribe button and ring-a-ding that little bell next to it at the same time. I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.